Hello everyone, my name is Tardell Alexis and I am with our business development team and this is Budgeting Essentials with Partners Federal Credit Union. So when it comes to our budget, of course we have to start the budget. So what does that look like? Starting our budget is first figure out what our cash flow is, what we have coming in. Next, you would definitely want to allocate your funds. So you want to see the income that you are getting, where exactly it's going, because sometimes we're getting paid. It's easy to lose track of where the funds are filling up these buckets. Next, by allocating your funds, it's going to be easier for you to track your expenses, whether your income is going mostly to bills, mostly to savings, or mostly to your wants, which we'll touch into a bit later. After you are able to figure out what your cash flow is, allocating your funds and tracking your expenses, that is the beginning of really getting a handle on your debt. We want to figure out what our net cash flow is. So to figure out our net cash flow is a simple equation. You are going to have your income minus your expenses, and that's going to be what your net cash flow is. So for example, if my income for a month is going to be $2,500, but when I'm looking at my expenses, when I'm tracking my expenses, I see that with my rent or mortgage, my car payment, my groceries, bills such as utilities, that total amounts to $2,000. So I would take $2,500 minus the $2,000, which is my expenses, and the total that I have left over would be $500, which would be my net cash flow. That amount is what I'm going to have left over where if I wanted to put into my savings, I can. If I wanted to put towards some debt I have, I could. And if I wanted to maybe pay another bill early or pay something off, I could do that as well. Keep in mind, what your net cash flow, you always want to be positive. To give a different example, let's say my expenses was $2,000 and then I saw my income was also $2,000. I have no net cash flow, meaning the leftover is zero, so I'm either living beyond my means and I need to change something so that my net cash flow is always in the positive and not a deficit. Now, that may be easier for those who are salary. I do understand there are people who get paid hourly and that is fine because you can definitely budget around what we call fluctuating income. So if you have a fluctuated income, it's very simple. You would always want to figure out the average. One week you get paid more, one week you get paid less. Let's say one week you get paid $520 and the next week you get paid $540. It's easy to figure out the average is going to be about $500 that you would wanna work with. After that, you would calculate your average expenses such as your bills, utilities, car payment, rent, and mortgage. And after you figure out those expenses, you would want to fine tune your budget. Fine tuning your budget will look different for everyone. You may want to fine tune it weekly to help keep yourself accountable. You may want to fine tune it bi-weekly or even daily. Because it's fluctuating, you would definitely want to be accountable with yourself to keep you in that budget to maintain your process. Where you want to be is the 50, 30, 20 rule. Now with the 50, 30, and 20 rule, it's going to look different for everyone, but the 50, 30, and 20 rule, is gonna be 50% of your main things that you cannot live without. So your rent, your mortgage, utilities, your car payment, gas, groceries. Your 30% bucket is gonna be your wants. So your wants could be Starbucks, you like a coffee in the morning. Maybe you enjoy concerts like I do. Maybe you enjoy going to the movies. That's gonna be your wants bucket because these are things that you enjoy, but these are also things that are not necessarily a need that you can live without. And then lastly, for our 20% bucket, you have your savings and your debt. So your savings and your debt bucket is going to look like putting income into your savings account. If you have a IRA, for example, putting more towards your 401k and your debt bucket, as well as the 20% is going to look like maybe a credit card. If you have a personal loan, if you have a student loan. So the 50, 30 and 20 rule is your want needs and savings and debt. Now keep in mind, this can be a little flexible depending on you as an individual. Maybe your wants needs could be a little lower. Maybe you might want your wants to be 10%. So you'll take that other 10% and put that into your needs bucket. Or maybe you might take that other 10% and put that into your savings bucket to make it 20%. Keep in mind, the goal is to maintain the budget. So now this just becomes part of your everyday. So determine where your money is going. So as you're figuring out your cash flow, are you seeing the funds go more towards your bills? 
Are you seeing the funds going more towards your wants? Maybe you're someone that goes out a little more. Or are you seeing the funds go more towards your savings and your debt? Are you saving a little more aggressively than you usually do? Are you paying down your debt a little more aggressively than you usually do? You have to determine where your funds are going to keep track of your expenses, like I mentioned earlier, to have the budget really work out for you. Some of us, we do live paycheck to paycheck and it's not where we want to be, but it's okay, that's why I'm here to help you to break that cycle. Breaking the paycheck to paycheck cycle looks different in various ways. Breaking the paycheck to paycheck cycle includes having a zero spend day. Me personally, I love my zero spend day to be Monday because we all love to enjoy ourselves on the weekends, whether we are going out with friends or we want to spend quality time with family. So Monday for me personally, I like to have a zero spend day because we know with our banks, it does take time for funds to process and a lot of those changes don't reflect until Tuesday. So me personally, I like my zero spend day as Monday, but the most important thing is to have a zero spend day. Next, you wanna have a check-in day. So after you haven't spent anything, your check-in day will be a Tuesday because you would see exactly where you stand when it comes to your fund. How much more maybe I can put towards my needs bucket. Maybe this week I can put a little more towards my savings bucket to hit my savings goal a little faster than I anticipated to. Automate my expenses as well. Breaking the paycheck to paycheck cycle includes automating expenses. Sometimes life happens, we're busy. And if you don't have an automated expenses, sometimes it can count against you because if you are going in and paying yourself, since life can get busy at times, you may forget. And by forgetting, unfortunately, it equates to getting unnecessary fee. So let's say the unnecessary fee was $35. That's $35 we could have easily avoided. That's $35 I could have went into my needs bucket to groceries if I just had automated expenses. So automated expenses help us because in case we forget, it's always taken care of, it's going to be paid automatically. And then setting different accounts. Setting different accounts is something great, especially here at Partners that we offer. Whether you have a savings account for your personal or emergency fund, you may have a savings account because you are someone that likes to go on vacation. So you may open another savings account and tie a vacation for yourself. Maybe you are someone that loves your Starbucks every day and you want a separate account for your coffee. Title the account coffee and have the funds go into your coffee account. Setting up different accounts and having your eggs in various baskets can sometimes help you from a bigger picture look at where your funds are going exactly. Sometimes having it in one account, it can be confusing because we have so many things debiting from the account. So setting different accounts can definitely be a big aid in when it's coming to setting up your budget. Taking control of your debt. So considering different payment methods. We're in the year 2023, it's a digital age. So a lot of us like myself love Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, Google Pay. Not saying to get rid of that method, but you can also have a different method set up in your day-to-day. -day. So another method could be cash. You may take out cash weekly and say, okay, these funds are gonna be solely for when I'm at work and I need to buy lunch, I'm going to use my cash fund. If I run out of my cash fund, now I know myself and to hold myself accountable, I can no longer purchase meals at work because I'm out of my cash funds. If I go back to my digital, now I'm dipping in the bucket of something else. You may even want to consolidate your debt. If you have multiple credit cards, if you have multiple personal loans and you feel like paying the minimum but you're not making a debt as you need to, you can consolidate that and have one payment a month to help you when it comes to paying down your debt and helping you stick to your budget in that manner. You can also talk to your lender. This is one of my favorite facts because a lot of people are not aware. If you are someone, for example, if you have a loan payment due on the third and you have another loan payment due on the fourth and you feel like this is too close and in my budget it makes it a little tight because I also have bills and obligations due at the beginning of the month, talk to your lender and ask them, you know, I've been a member of you for quite some time. I have a great payment history. Is there any way if I can change my payment date and a lot of the times if they work with you and they see that your payment history, they will say yes. And a lot of people are not aware that you can talk to your lender. So never be afraid to talk to your lender and do what needs to be done so we can help with your budget and you can set yourself up for financial success in the future. To help with your budget, you may want to look into consolidation. Consolidation with different loan options. So here are partners we can help you when it comes to a personal loan. Maybe you have various loans that you want to consolidate into one to have that one payment to aid you in your budget goal. We can help you with that. Maybe you are a homeowner, so we can help you with a 
home equity line of credit, which is a loan that we take from the equity of your home. And we can also help you with a credit card balance transfer. You may have more than one credit card, but at this time you feel like your interests are a little high. Example, you can have a credit card at a 15% interest. You may have one at a 17% interest. Here we can help you with that credit card balance transfer as well as a consolidation option. We can also help you with our partner's financial education. We have several different topics depending where you are in your financial journey. So you can choose for over 75 different topics. One of them is gonna be the budgeting here with me today, but we also have several other topics when it comes to emergency funds, financial stress, managing, debt saving, and retirement. Also, repaying student loans and more. We also offer this platform in several different languages, whether you're speaking English, Spanish, or even Haitian Creole, for example. Thank you so much, and thank you for attending Budgeting Essentials for Partners Federal Credit Union.